Welcome back to the Morning Blend. This is National Eating Disorders Awareness Week. One goal of this week is to shine a spotlight on eating disorders and put life-saving resources into the hands of those in need. Rogers Memorial Hospital right here in Southeast Wisconsin is a leader in the treatment of eating disorders for children, teens, and adults. And today we are joined by Carrie Tilke Weber. She's the lead dietitian at Rogers. We're super excited to have this conversation. Sure and here. Monday starting uh, eating disorders week. Good morning. Great to yeah. see you. Thank you so much. This is an important topic and probably affects a lot more of us than we realize. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It does. Yeah. <laughs> it's great to have Rogers right in the backyard. Absolutely. What are some ways that people can kind of decrease risks for developing an eating disorder? Oh, there's so many different variables, but as a registered dietitian and a certified dietitian in specifically in eating disorders, I get really concerned when I hear people talk badly about their body mm -hmm. or their weight. I especially get concerned when the students at school are talked about with their weight, with the body mass index. I don't know if you, anybody knows of any schools. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it can be very uh, concerning to the children. It can cause confusion. It can cause eating disorder behaviors, and it can cause uh, low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. So my advice to the parents is to tell the schools. No way. No, no way. <laughs> I like that. So are you saying some schools are, are, are weighing them and then giving them their BMI in class or in school and their health? And in front yes. of other kids yes. oh, very often. Because I've heard that too. That's awful. It can lead to bullying as well. Yeah. What are your thoughts on really restrictive mm. diets? Does that have an effect on eating disorders? Absolutely. Restrictive diets do not work. They can cause eating disorders, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it's something that uh, we don't want our clients to do. Obviously, we don't want anyone to do them. It can actually cause weight gain mm -hmm. and it can cause uh, self-esteem issues as well as uh, eating disorders. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and they really are kind of these quick fix that doesn't always last long, like you said, leading to other problems later. This is really neat. You brought this toolkit today. What, what exactly does this represent or do you use this with your clients? We sure do. Yeah. We have many dietitians that specifically work with patients in, with eating disorders mm -hmm. and I like to call it a toolkit. And guess what the number one item in my toolkit would be for a dietitian? Hmm. Is food? It? Food! Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I brought some food models with me. This is oh, yeah. bread. Okay, you got some fruit, fruit models right. here too. So the, you know, all the uh, carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. are important. Uh, what else is really important is a meal plan. Yeah. So we'll put our patients on a meal plan. Okay. And oh, what we do nice. is we have breakfast, lunch, dinner. Mm -hmm. And then we have the three snacks so that everybody's eating every few hours. It keeps your metabolism in check mm -hmm. along with uh, blood sugars. It provides structure yeah. and guidance. Because a lot of times, it, it isn't eating disorder around control as well? So would this help kind of give you control over what you need to be doing? Absolutely. Like the structure is very important. So, mm -hmm. so everybody knows what, how often to eat throughout the day and uh, gives them ideas on how to set up their... What are, day with the food. What about supplements? <laughs> That's uh, the next thing in the toolkit. We have different kinds of supplements at Rogers. Not this isn't the only kind, we have several, but uh, that also could help uh, in take away from the decision making. Mm -hmm. Sometimes oh, it's I really see. tough with the food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like an insurer or something like that, mm -hmm. that where you're getting a lot of those nutrients and everything. The meal plan you have, support systems are important, family and friends. That's Absolutely. something you talk about. <laughs> Of course, I've got my family in here. Love oh, that. cute. Okay. Aw, that's my girl. little baby girl. That's Aww. cute. That's cute, but it's representative of the fact that the people need that right. support from the people closest to them in order to fight this. Right, to, exactly. To, to have it's a really healthy important. attitude about not just their, their bodies, but their weight. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another tool that we use uh, in the eating disorder programs, it's called a feared food checklist. Mm. And uh, Rogers Memorial uses evidence-based treatment called cognitive behavioral therapy. Mm -hmm. And the ERP, which is exposure and response prevention, what we do is we, we come up with a list of foods. Uh, this happens to be the protein page, although the pages, there's probably about seven pages altogether. We'll ask the patients, okay, now how does your anxiety rate on a scale from zero to seven? To things like chicken tenders, grilled chicken, mm -hmm. pork chops, turkey burger, 
ground beef hamburger. Right. And then what we do is uh, we'll say zero is, oh, I'm already eating these foods. I can do this. Mm -hmm. And seven is there's absolutely no way I can even think about it without becoming anxious. Wow. Interesting. I bet that's really helpful to identify mm -hmm. those and for people to become aware of that. Absolutely. And what the dietitians will do is go through that checklist and then they'll add the foods to their meal plans. Yeah. Uh, say we'll start Slowly. with the threes and the fours. And then once they can master those threes and fours, then the other sevens and sixes kind of shift down into where the threes and fours used to be. So it, it helps. It's hard for a lot of people, maybe women in particular, but not just women, to not fixate on their weight. How? What are your thoughts on? Because I see a scale here. What are your What are your thoughts on the scale? Well, we have a couple more tools in our toolkit, and we are not numbers. And we do have a lot of people that uh, suffer with anxiety and obsessive compulsive disorder, along with an eating disorder. So what we tell them to do is take their scale and bring a sledgehammer to it. All right, let's bring out let's your see. other dietitian here. <laughs> here comes you brought Maxine. One. This is right, <laughs> that's Maxine. So you actually, it's, is it important visual for people to see a, a sledgehammer like that and see? Absolutely, no, seriously, we would like to, we would like to smash it today, but we thought that could get kind of <laughs> questionable. <laughs> I break stuff, right? Yeah. So wh why don't you take it? Why don't you just say, Molly, just say, I am not a number and throw it in the garbage. I am not a number, I'm gonna throw it in the garbage. Get you ready? It. Here it goes. All I right. like it. That felt good. <laughs> was that invigorating? Yes. Yeah, it was. But I think that that's an important um, visual for people who are struggling. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. Journaling, working with a professional, and getting the help that you need is so important. Rogers Memorial is the place to call if you've got information or you need help for one that you've got um, one struggling with an eating disorder. Rogershospital.org is the website to visit for more. Thanks so much for being here, Carrie. That was we my appreciate pleasure. It. Thank you. Mm -hmm. There are also great stories of recovery that are awesome. People can check out this website for more on that as it relates to eating disorders. Since this is Eating Disorders Awareness Week, that's at rogersinhealth.org. Great to see you. Thank you so much for you the bet. information. Appreciate it. Thank you.